podcast in live, brother. Welcome back to Talking Boxing with Billy C on the mighty tbsradio.net, brother. What you gonna do, brother? And uh, we're back. You're listening to the Talking Box with Billy C. Show. Hey, man, don't forget to get a copy of, you know, you know, I'm, 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 I'm being shallow, man. I'm plugging my book. Get a copy of my book right now. That's right. Tom Molino, From Bondage to the Baddest Man on the Planet. It's a story that you got to read, man. This is a guy that's uh, virtually forgotten. I want to change history. We got to remember Tom Molino, man. Get yourself a copy. You can get a copy where all good books are sold, including Barnes & Noble and Amazon.com. Now, if you want a signed copy, you know how you got to do it. You got to visit our website, www.billycboxing.com, and click on the book hub section. Now, joining me right now, as a matter of fact, a guy that I acknowledge in the book, a uh, boxing hall of famer and uh, New Jersey boxing commissioner, and he's working his butt off right now as we speak. Larry Hazard joins us. What's up, brother? Hey, Billy, what's going on, baby? Uh, I got to get that book now. If you want, I'll just rip out that page with your name on it, you know, and then, you know, we'll, 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 we'll cover that. But, uh, hey, man, I'll I, I tell you something. You know, there's a few things. I know you're busy, man, but there's a few things I got to talk to you. First and foremost, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about, uh, you know, trainers, and, and we both agreed that, you know, it'd be great to, to you know, I- incorporate some kind of a, a requirement for, uh, uh, for, at, for at least the the lead the the chief second to get some kind of training. Well, this past Friday, okay, Friday, and it happened under your nose, man. There was a guy in the corner. All right, now now, granted, it kind of goes against what we've been saying. All right, because the fighter Nick Brinson did really well. He did really well in that fight um, uh, until mm-hmm. until the end. But the guy in his corner, Gunther Fishgold. Is a manager. The guy never. I, I don't even know if anybody ever. I don't even if he ever got in a fight in high school or anything. I, I mean, you know, he's a he's a uh, owns a nut factory. He sells peanuts and stuff like that. I mean, uh, he got into boxing uh, because you know he he forked over some money. That's the kind of uh, reasons that I think we need this kind of training because you know I, I don't know if you had a chance to to listen, but he gave this kid Brinson who performed brilliantly in that fight no constructive criticism at all he the biggest thing he said was you feel okay you feel okay yeah have a have a sip of water I, what's your thoughts on that man well hey listen i told you it's coming all right now you know the effort would be to educate these guys i don't know you know i'm not i don't think that the approach should be to go out and just try to you know weed out people I think I think the effort should be to educate those who are there, yeah. regardless. They're yeah. there now. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I agree. I agree. I mean, you know, we talked about it, and there it is, right under my nose. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. But at least I've made a commitment. It's going to happen. You know, it's going to happen, and um, it's going to happen soon here in New Jersey. And like I told you, I'm going to try to do as much as I can to reach out especially the New York, maybe the Pennsylvania. But once we get the ball rolling, you know, who knows? Maybe it'll get around the country. I'll propose it to the ABC. If they don't want to do it, that's fine. But we're definitely going to do it here in New Jersey. That's okay. good, you know, and, so, and 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 you're right. It's not like you want. It's not like my point is, and I was just you know kidding around. Uh, I, I mean, I was serious about Gunther, but and he's a friend of mine, you know. So that's why. But but the thing is this. You know, it's not like you, you're, you're trying to chase people out. All you're trying to do is say, hey, if you're going to be the guy that's the chief second, then you got to know what you're doing, and you got to sit through a seminar, you got to have a certificate, it's good for a year, whatever the case is, whatever the rule is, as long as they yeah. show some kind of effort to, to, to be that guy, rather than just say, here's my 25 bucks or whatever the fee is, Poof! You're an instant uh, chief second, you know, and and you know, and it doesn't apply to the guy carrying the spit bucket and the guy feeding them the water. But I do believe that the two people in the corner that should be, you know, trained 
is the uh, chief second and and which many people don't even realize, but the cut man should have to know what the hell he's doing too. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, you know, it has to start somewhere, and I'm willing. I'm certainly willing to make that effort because I think that it's needed. There's no argument for me in terms of whether it's needed or not, and I think it's a great idea. And I'm in a position where I can at least make an effort to to get it done. Now, and one more thing, Billy, before we go ahead, I'm going to do this very quickly. Um, Henry Haskup, as you know, a great uh, historian on boxing, and he listens to our program, you know, most weeks, if not every week, and he corrected me. My idol, Sugar Ray Robinson, was beaten a few times, uh, twice. By opponents, as you know, I said last week that Ray Robinson had never gotten, you know, nobody ever beat him twice. But Henry corrected me on that. But I will say, not many. He wasn't beaten twice by many guys, but he did get beaten um, twice by a few fighters, and I, I think it was kind of late in his career. Well, it certainly wasn't during those early years. Uh, when he was a welterweight, I don't think so. No, but he he never lost. to make it correct. He, he never lost as a welterweight. His first loss was Jake Lamada. But listen, when you yeah. fight two hundred and some odd fights, you're bound to lose a That's few, right. brother. You know, I mean, yeah, you know, even right. if you're fighting your, your grandmother two hundred times, she's going to kick your ass at least That's once right. or twice. You know, so um, I mean, come on. But um, I just wanted to make that correction because Henry Henry jumped on that right away. So you know. That's the way those historians are. Oh, oh, I know Henry. Henry. Henry could be Henry could be vicious at times, you know, when it comes to that. But hey, speaking of uh, uh, the ABC, and now that there's a new uh, <coughs> commander in chief in there, maybe 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 they will uh, be more inclined to to flex their muscle a little bit if they can. And uh, who knows, you know, maybe maybe that came at a good time, you know. Well, who knows? We'll see. Everybody deserves an opportunity. To uh, you know, try to move things forward. So the new, the new organization, the new administration, you know, they deserve, um, you know, a chance to try to make some, some new initiatives for the better. And uh, certainly, I would support anything that they uh, choose to do that makes sense in the sport of boxing. Exactly. I'm not going to support anything that's just doesn't make any sense. If it makes sense, um, you can count me. I'll be right on board with. It. Larry, I wanted to get your thoughts, uh, which is actually an amazing thing. I, I know we talked uh, uh, how we're both looking forward to the Triple G and David Lemieux fight uh, at Madison Square Garden uh, uh, in uh, October. But what's your thoughts on, after all the great events that have been held uh, at Madison Square Garden, what's your thoughts on this fight uh, selling, uh, breaking the pre-sale record, selling over 6,000 tickets in, in, a, in a couple of hours the other day. I mean, uh, does that prove that, you know, the fans want to see these types of fights or what? I think it's a great indication that it is. And it also proves that boxing... It, I think it also proves that boxing is not dead, as a lot of people think. Oh, I, I think that's a good indication of, of, of that, you know. Larry, uh, it was made official, and we all knew it was going to happen, but it was made official that Miguel Cotto and Canelo Alvarez will be fighting. Uh, there, It's uh, signed, sealed, and delivered for uh, November 21st, which uh, traditionally, at least from my experience from promoting to, uh, you know, any time around Thanksgiving through New Year's has always been the death of uh, uh, at least the shows I've tried to, to make. Um, but this is a big, big time event. What's your thoughts on this early, you know, early thoughts on this fight, Canelo Cotto uh, for Cotto's middleweight title? Well, I think it's going to be that's the next big event to take place. I think it's going to be an exciting fight. You know, uh, Cotto has found new life. Canelo, even though you, you know he showed in his last one that he's back, so I, I, I see nothing but fireworks there, man. These are the good fights. These are the fights that the fans want to see, and the fans are getting them. And so, let, hey, let, let's let it keep coming. I, I, Great. I, I, 
I agree with you there, man. We got the we got that one uh, in uh, in November. We, we just mentioned the Triple G David Lemieux fight in October. I mean, I, I'm so glad that they that they're happening. But uh, we got some mega things happening in the state of New Jersey uh, tomorrow night and Saturday night, back to back nights uh, in uh, in Jersey. Let's talk about the card on Spike TV, a PBC series card. Uh, you're uh, probably at the weigh in right now. Uh, how do these guys look? How do these guys look? Ma Ma Marco, Ma Marco Huck and Glowacki. Uh, how do these guys look? I'm so excited to see Marco Huck here in the states. He looks good, man. It's it's a lot of excitement. That's where I'm 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 down here right now. There's a lot of excitement, um, you know, for that fight. But hey, Billy, there's a great deal of excitement that's been generated. With that Cunningham and Tomlin fight, I don't know where all of that. That's a contentious thing that's going on, Tomlin and uh, Cunningham. Cunningham has been talking a lot of smack, and of course, you know he's been accusing Tomlin of uh, the drugs and all of the other stuff. So you know we're prepared to do the proper testing and everything. We we are ready, but there's a lot of uh, tension. There's a lot of excitement, and we had a packed way in down here, which surprised me. So, come Friday night, tomorrow night, we expect fireworks, man, down here at the Pro Arena. You know, it's going to be, it's a good thing. And Huck, Huck looks nice, trim. You know, he's an exciting fighter, and his challenger, um, you know, he looks, they both look ready. So, we look for Spike TV to really... I'll be doing a big thing tomorrow night. It's going to be very exciting, and I just can't wait, man. You, you know, it, it's funny. Um, you know, you you talk about the excitement, and and obviously Tarver Cunningham, uh, they're, they're the main event, as far as I know, right? They're the, they're the main event for that uh, card, right? Yeah, they're, they're actually the main event, I guess. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You so think that the championship would be, but they seem like they're the main event. Well, this, this is what I want to get at. You know, here here we go. We got Antonio Tarver against Steve Cunningham, fighting as heavyweights. Both of them, uh, well, Antonio Tarver more successful, obviously, as a light heavyweight, but both of these guys are probably more towards natural cruiserweights. You know, 200 pounders, and they're both fighting as heavyweights. They're gaining all of the, the, the excitement like you're, you're filling us in on. And Marco Huck, who's a cruiserweight, who's got to, I mean, you got to see that he's a big dude, you know? I mean, why do you think the, the cruiserweight division here in the States because it's not the same over in Europe. They're, they're very supportive of the cruiserweights. Why do you think that the, the people here in the States, you know, I, they just they don't show the same interest in, in cruiserweight, but as soon as you mention heavyweight, even if it was a former cruiserweight, they're all jacked up. What, what, what do you think the reason is? Uh, I, I, I think it's just tradition. I mean, you know, here in the States, we've always, the way that the heavyweight division goes is the way that boxing goals, especially here in the state. And I mean, it's been that way for decades. Uh, you know, I mean, all the way back to the days of Joe Lewis and Marciano, those guys. Uh, how, however the heavyweights go, the heavyweights are the cornerstone, is the cornerstone of boxing in the state. And it's just hard to break with tradition. That's just the way it is, because We've had some exciting cruiser weeks over time, but they still never had the, the ability to garner the attention that the heavyweight division gets. The heavyweight is the king, the baddest man on the planet. That's, you know, that's what the way it goes. And uh, it's just very difficult to break away from that tradition here in the state. That's the only thing I can... That's the only reason that I can say I'm for that. You know, uh, Cunningham has got, Steve Cunningham has gotten, not that he didn't have a large fan base, but because of the battle his, his beautiful young daughter has gone through. I mean, if you're human in, in today's world, you, you, you got to feel for this guy. And whether you like him or not, you, you got to pull for him. Um, and, and he seems like he's devoted you know, his everything uh, around his daughter and his family and stuff. 
And, you know, nothing against Antonio Tarver, but, you know, it, it, I'm finding it really hard to root against Cunningham, even though I was never really a big fan of his in the past, but I've become one. Is he going to come through, do you think, tomorrow night? Well, he certainly has a tremendous chance. And, of course, you know, I want to—I got to pick my words, you know, sparingly here. But just to touch on something you're saying, you, it's hard to, to, to go against or, or not feel for a guy like Cunningham um, because of the daughter. That, that fills it in. But, hey, man, this guy is a Navy veteran. You know, he, he represents pretty much what we stand for and what we admire in, this, in America. You know, he's done, he's done that time in, in the armed forces to protect his country. He conducts himself like a real gentleman. You know, he has a nice personality. He's not one of these guys that's always shooting off a lot of crap, you know, and saying things that are out of context and, you know, things that just are out of place. He's a, he's a, he's a fine representative of our sport, boxing. And he gives 1,000% every time he fights. Okay, and I think that uh, maybe subconsciously, this is one of the reasons why you also uh, support him. Because, you know, I'm, I'm a grassroots guy, you know, and I like fighters who bring it every time they go in there. They don't care who they fight. This guy trains religiously. He's, you've never seen him out of shape. He makes weight every time he comes in, whatever contract where it is or whatever it is, and this guy is a t totally dedicated to the sport of boxing. He's dedicated uh, to his family, and of course, with the with the uh, with the youngster, with the baby, you know that situation just spices it up even more. So even if it were not for the you know the hardship with the with the kid, with the with the little girl, you still can't help but admire. A, a guy like Cunningham, because he lives a clean life, you know, he's just one of those type of uh, fighters that you admire, just by the way that he fights and the way that he conducts himself. So I, that's, that's all I can say about that. Is that fight, um, is the winner of that fight, is there any implications that the winner is going to, uh, you know, get a shot at, at maybe Deontay Wilder or something? Is there any talk about that uh, around the water cooler? Well, I haven't heard any talks about it, but I'm sure, you know, I'm sure that there is some some um, speculation there that if, if I have one of these guys who win, and if he wins in a big way, certainly should be in line. At least, at least I'm, I'm sure that that's what they're thinking. Okay, yeah. and um, you know they're fighting. I don't know if both of these guys are tied into that. PBC uh, thing with Al Heyman or not, but you know any 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 of those guys that are with with that group, any time they win, they they're certainly looking for bigger and better things. And by the way, you know I just had a nice conversation with Sean Porter, who's I probably doing some of the commentating tomorrow night. I think I read that somewhere. And what a nice young man he is, you know. And it's just great to to you know, see fighters that conduct themselves in that way. These yeah. are what you call the, the, you know, the, what's that word, role models, yeah. or whatever that means. Yeah. You know, at least, you know, they're nice young men, and you, you just enjoy being around. Hey, nothing against Andre Berto, but I would have loved to have seen Sean Porter get a shot at at Floyd for that uh, for that for that next fight. To be honest with you, but Marco Huck against uh, Glowacki. Um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing Huck. I, I've watched uh, uh, many of his fights. Uh, obviously, he's never fought in the States, and, and I'm really excited about him. I, I think he's got um, a, a lot on the line to, to perform well here in the States uh, to you know make sure he, he gets another return trip here. But the fighter that he's fighting in, uh, Christoph Glow Glowacki, he's a tough guy. I mean, I, you know, I, I've only seen footage of his fights but he's got to look like he's 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 in there to, to win, right? I mean, he's an undefeated fighter. I mean, you just had a weigh-in with this guy. I mean, wh wh what's your thoughts on him? 
Yes, you know, you know. Usually, when I have when I have a show of this caliber, I usually go to YouTube and some of those other outlets so to, to try to get a look at these guys. And what you're saying is very true. I expect that this, I expect that fight to be a very exciting fight. And this this kid Huck, you know, he's a he's a very good fighter, and they both look to be in well and in good condition. And I expect. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't steal the show, you know. So, this, this tomorrow night, I think that the, at least the TV version of the fights that everybody's going to see is going to be a real home run. At least I'm looking forward to it. And I think that this, um, this Hulk fight, be surprised if they don't steal if they don't steal the show. No, I. You know what? I I, I think you're 100 percent correct because Glowacki uh, is an aggressive fighter and uh, Huck's got something to prove. And I and I think you're right. I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, one other thing I want to ask you about that uh, card before you you can. Uh, I want you to promote the other card that you guys are having. Um, but uh, Otur Spitzka, the uh, the Polish kid, uh, is fighting uh, Yasmeni uh, Konsugra, uh, Konsugra, I yes. think is how you say. It. Um, I, I don't know anything about Konsugra. Uh, Spitzka has been a story that I, I've watched. He 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 busted onto the scene very raw uh, out of uh, the slammer, and uh, he seems to have uh, gotten uh, a little more refined. He, he's working uh, uh, with a with a top trainer now. Um, what, it, from your opinion, obviously uh, you haven't seen them fight yet. Uh, that won't take place till tomorrow. But did they give you the appearance, uh, if you were going to judge a book by the cover, that that fight is going to be entertaining as well? I think it's going to be entertaining also. Those, those, the three fights on top. I think that New Jersey is really going to be um, pretty proud of this 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 particular show. You know, this week, those three fights. I expect fireworks, man. I really do, and I expect that. This this particular event can really bring us back into the mainstream, you know, in terms of big time boxing. You know, I uh, up until yesterday, I thought the fight was Saturday. It's got such a big ring to it. I felt it was a Saturday. I'm telling night. you, man. I'm telling you, the atmosphere being oh man. I said, oh man, I don't want to speak too soon. But are we back? You know, are we back? I don't know if we can just keep it going like this. But tomorrow night, I mean, it's a buzz around here, man, like I haven't felt in a long time. And it's just great, man. I'm, 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 I'm just souping this up, man. It's, Tell him. That's good stuff, man. Now, what's the other card? Who, who's the main event on the other card that's taking place down there? Well, um, you mean the, you say the undercard? No, no, no. You have, don't you have two cards happening in Jersey? Isn't there one on, on Saturday night, too? Oh, no, no, we got two on Saturday night. We got one tomorrow night, and we have two on Saturday night simultaneously. We have Chaz Witherspoon fighting some un unknown kid, I, 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 some unknown in Atlantic City, and in Jersey City. We got one in the southern region and one in the northern region. In Jersey City, we just have a basic club show up there, there's a, a young group of guys up there, and I think Kodo Promotions has something to do with it. LGM Promotions, they have an exciting card going on over in Jersey City. You know, now, is the Chaz Witherspoon fight at that new arena that, that you guys were telling yeah. me about? Well, it's at, it's at a place called the Playground. Yeah, 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 okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's inside of the old Ocean One. I don't know if you, you've been to Atlantic City, you know, right off of Caesars, it's like right adjacent to Caesars on the boardwalk. It used to be like Caesars Pier, and it was Ocean One is what they called it. Inside of there was like a massive shopping plaza, you know, different outlets, so they have a new outlet inside of there that they call the playground. It's an arena. So it's, this is going to be my first. I'm going to be in Atlantic City on Saturday. And I have all the people, my deputy commissioner, and the rest of my staff will be in Jersey City. So this has been an exciting and busy weekend 
Forest here in New Jersey, and um, hey, I welcome more and more. So this is what big time boxing is all about. Well, it reminds listen. me of the old days, you know. So. Well, congratulations on all of that, Larry. Uh, it does seem like uh, uh, boxing's uh, got itself back into uh, uh, the state of New Jersey. And, and you know, all, all people have to do is uh, look in the history books and see where uh, a lot of those big fights, especially under your guard, uh, took place uh, in Atlantic City and, and other parts of New Jersey. So I, I, I'm rooting for you. You know that. And uh, you couldn't uh, have a better weekend, especially uh, with that big event tomorrow night on Spike TV. I'm looking forward to it. It's a, it's a fight card that uh, I, I can't wait. It's, it's one of these types of cards that not only does it look good on paper, not only does the fights themselves have meaning behind them, but I actually think it's going to live up to what I'm expecting. So I'm looking forward to it, my man, and uh, uh, I'm glad you're going to be there uh, monitoring what goes on because uh, there's nobody better yeah. than you doing that, man. Okay, Billy. Well, listen, get back to work. Make sure that nobody's, uh, you know, standing, keeping their foot on the scales, you know. <laughs> so, okay, I'm wrapping it up now anyway. All okay. right, brother. I'll talk to you next week. Okay, Billy, thank you. All right, take care. That's my man Larry Hazard, see? He's uh, taking the time to, to be with us uh, while he's doing his weigh-ins uh, in uh, uh, in Jersey right now for the big fight that we're talking about. Antonio Tarver against Steve Cunningham is the main event. Marco Captain Huck against Christoph Glowacki uh, is uh, the co-main. And uh, I hope we get to see a Tur Spitzka against uh, uh, Yasmeni uh, Kansug. Consugra, I think is how you spell it, Consugra, uh, how you say it. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully we'll see those three. I know we're going to see the other two, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see that. Now, don't forget, uh, you know, PBC is uh, uh, kind of wormed into all of our boxing this week because then Saturday, Lucien Butte returns to the ring on uh, NBC uh, Sportsnet. So busy, busy, busy weekend of uh, boxing, and uh, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, the fights themselves look pretty good. Hey, listen, I'm going to take a short break. When I come back, Dax Khan will give us his uh, three fights of the week. He'll break them down and give us his predictions. And that should take place in about two minutes. Go! 